welcome to the Caribbean. And Caribbean, you always think, what a beautiful place. Not bad, huh? Caribbean is a model of European influenced colonies, semi-autonomous territories, overseas territories and independent countries. But the colonization of the different islands of the Caribbean didn't happen at first with the Europeans. Here on the Windward Isles, which is where I am just now, colonization could be traced back to about 400 BC when various local tribes had wars and invaded each other's territories. And it's really hard to figure out who the original indigenous people were because some people died out and some people didn't. When the Europeans came here, they thought, what a great place to grow sugar, a drug that has no beneficial purposes for nutrition, and we can make sugar plantations with slaves. So they brought a whole lot of slaves from West Africa and Central Africa. In the early 1800s, at various times, European countries gave up their slavery. And when they gave up their slavery, local countries here in the Caribbean either got autonomy, such as Martinique, or full independence, like Jamaica. Generally speaking, not all, but most English territories became independent. Generally, the French ones stayed part of France, and generally the Dutch ones became just overseas territories with differing legal status. Now, because so many of the Caribbean countries are kind of similar, what I'm going to do as I come down the Windward Isles is see if I can find one or two things in each country to say there's a little different. Now, Martinique is an overseas territory of France, but France doesn't count it as an overseas territory like, say, the British do. What France do is they say all of its overseas territories are France. It's French. It's why here the roads are funded by the European Union and we spend euros. So what's the interesting thing I'm going to tell you about, about Martinique? Well, it's this, the Mount Pelé volcano, one of the newest World Heritage sites only inscribed on the World Heritage list late last year. On the 8th of May 1902, massive eruption horizontally came out of the mountain, such an unusual type of eruption called Palaean. And from that lateral eruption came a whole lot of rocks, pyroclastic flows and superheated gas that came down to the town below at St. Pierre with speeds over 500 kilometers an hour, wiping out 30,000, yes, 30,000 people in a single day, making it one of the most destructive volcanic eruptions in human history. Wandering the excavated ruins of St. Pierre, you get an overwhelming feeling like it's a modern day Pompeii, which <laughs> I suppose it is. The volcanic eruption is not unusual through the Caribbean. In fact, most of these Caribbean islands running south, east to north or west are a couple of arcs of volcanic activity that have happened over five or six different geological epochs. Martinique itself was constructed by volcanic activity over three different epochs, with the newest being Mount Pele Volcano, the interesting factoid from Martinique. On we go to St Lucia. So welcome to Castries, the capital of St Lucia. St Lucia, interesting factoid, is one of only two countries in the world named after a female. The other country named after a female is named after a fictional female, that's Ireland. So this is the only country in the world named after a real female. Now the first peoples of St Lucia were said to be the Arawaks who came from Central South America around about 400 AD. They themselves were dispossessed in about 800 AD by the Caribs. They killed all the men and they integrated women. So the first genocide here of St Lucia had nothing to do with the Europeans. The French first colonised the place in the mid parts of the last millennium and Britain and France fought over Lucia at least 14 times, changing control backwards and forwards over 600 years. St Lucia got its full independence in 1979, but it remains a member of the Commonwealth so, St. Lucie of Syracuse, this is your namesake. I'm on a ferry heading from the island of St. Vincent to the island chain of Grenadines, and I'm in a country that's called, and it has a flag that looks like. Now, 
What is the interesting little tidbit about St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Well, way back in around about 400 AD, the Ameri Indians inhabited this area. And around about 800 AD, the Caribs dispossessed, killed and genocided off the face of the earth, the Ameri Indians that were living here. Now the Caribs were a pretty aggressive people and they fought against the European colonialists when they came. So the British built a fort called Fort Charlotte where the cannon are mainly pointing to the shore and inland, not outwards towards the pirates and the French because they were fighting against the Caribs. That's the interesting tidbit from St. Vincent's and the Grenadines. Other than that, it's got white sanded beaches on the Grenadines, it's got palm trees, it's got black sanded beaches on St. Vincent because there's a volcano at the top of St. Vincent that last erupted a couple of years ago. Oh, and by the way, pointing cannon inland might have helped the British in Singapore, if only they'd learned. Welcome to the island nation of Granada. Now, what is my little factoid here, and maybe it's a little bit subjective, but my factoid is Granada, the site of the only war that the United States has won since World War II. They didn't win Korea, they didn't win Vietnam, they didn't win Afghanistan. Maybe you could give them Iraq, depending on whether they had to cement the peace. So what was behind the war in Granada? Well, in 1979, the new dual movement had a bloodless coup and overthrew the government, putting in Morris Bishop as their new Marxist-Leninist leader. Then in 1983, they were overthrown by the People's Revolutionary Army, an excuse the Americans then used to invade because they didn't like Marxist-Leninist governments in the Caribbean. So the US brought together a coalition of six Caribbean nations, invaded Granada and won. And what not only have they won, they've re-established representative government that seems by all accounts to actually work. So that was what was behind the war in Granada. Now, another waterfall and another pretty area of Granada, and I'm a little bit cynical about this. Why, you might ask? Well, when I was 20, I had the good fortune of living on Hayman Island in the Whit Sundays, and the Whit Sundays in Australia is absolutely stunning. There are waterfalls, there are islands, there are white sanded beaches. And I'm yet to find anywhere in the world that is more physically stunning than my own backyard. Anyway, regards from Granada, and that is the end of our zoom through all of the Windward Isles 